I know what the problem in Rexton, New Brunswick is, lawless riots by eco-terrorists. That's the problem. But not just the one-night melee when six police cars were torched, when heavy paramilitary-style weapons were seized, including Soviet-style assault rifles, improvised explosive devices, or IEDs, and huge caches of bullets. I'm also talking about the continuous, slow-burn crime spree that Canadians have come to expect in other disputes where the antagonists are Indian supremacists, like in Caledonia or Oka. So even after the RCMP cleared out the rioters and arrested 40 of them in Rexton, there is a crime culture similar to the deep gangland problems in Los Angeles and Chicago. But instead of being called the Crips or the Bloods, they're called the Micmac Warriors. I showed you that when they're not busy rioting against the police or torching natural gas seismic vehicles, they're carjacking reporters, assaulting reporters, extorting reporters in the media because these gangs don't like critical press coverage. Just as a reminder, here's some video that our own Chris Sims shot nine days ago when a gang member named Tyson Peters, dressed in military fatigues, threatened her and other reporters for simply filming the scene of the riot days later on public property. Because you guys twist our words around. You don't get the story you guys, straight. Man. Wanna make us look bad? No. We yeah, you do. Don't f***ing lie. I'm not lying, sir. Yeah, I'm right, just sir. waiting for him to get his stuff. Look what you're doing right now. I can't say it again. I'll go over there. No, bust that camera. So this thug, Tyson Peters, this gang member, shouts and swears and threatens Chris, a young mother of two, and tells her to get off public property or else. So when she gets in her car... The other gang members won't let her leave. They start screaming at her to get out of the car. She called 911 and wouldn't get out, but the other reporters got out of their cars. That's called hijacking, by the way. Look at this. No, I'm an individual, ma'am. I'm trying to leave. You told me to leave. I'm not getting out. I'm trying to leave here. I am not moving. No, I'm not getting out of the car. No, this is my car. I'm trying to go back to town. You told me to leave. Hi there, I'm trying to leave. Please don't threaten me. I'm trying to leave here. That, my friends, is a crime spree. That's a gang problem. But since it's a criminal gang with a political agenda, we have a word for that, terrorism. Tyson Peters is a political terrorist threatening reporters with violence if they don't cover the riots against natural gas companies the right way. Well, time went by and maybe things cooled off. Grand Chief Sean Atlio of the Assembly of First Nations came to town and invited us to attend his press conference where he was going to talk about a better way to live than rioting. But when our reporter Josh Skernick showed up, some gang members started pushing him around and saying he looked like he was a fighter, but he hadn't fought them yet. I'm not going to twist anything, no, guys. No, you are. You no, are. No, Your organization we don't want to. has really. No. Please. No, no, please, turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off. You'll get out of here. Yeah. No. Please. You're in turn it our off. land. You have to leave. Thank hey, you. Please, please don't touch. Hey, man, you can't touch me, right? Well, well what? shut it. Just because you're off. a fighter? Never messed around with me before. Hey, man, you're threatening me. Come on. No, well, we ask you to get off our territory. Or get off our land right, right now. Please don't touch. Right there in an official press conference with other reporters standing a few feet away were an invited guest, but the gang members extort him, threaten him, assault him, batter him, conspire against him. He was not a trespasser. He wasn't misbehaving. He was doing his job, invited to do so. There is a guest of Sean Atlio, and a couple of thugs started pushing him, pushing his equipment, and making veiled threats to him. Not quite the screaming scene that their fellow gang member Tyson Peters did, but still, the message was clear. That's obscene. That's illegal, of course. It's a bunch of crimes, as I mentioned, but it's also on a more deeper level un-Canadian. I mean, in Canada, we do not bully or threaten or physically violate people we disagree with. We can use our words. We can enforce our private property, though neither of these occasions were on private property. But we cannot threaten or physically intimidate. And as of this time that I'm recording this, Tyson Peters remains at large without any criminal charges against him. Same with the bullies at the Atlio press conference. This was depressing for so many reasons, the main one, of, of course, being the casual destruction of the rule of law. I mean, they weren't even shy about all this. 
Tyson Peters knew he was on TV. He didn't give a damn. He made his threats anyways. The bullies at the press conference, same thing. You wouldn't see a member of the Bloods or the Crips doing that on TV. They'd be too worried about being arrested. But not our Indian supremacists, not these Micmac gang members. They have correctly estimated that they will not be charged. Or if they are, they'll be released uneventfully. And that they'll certainly suffer no moral or social opprobrium for it. They won't be marginalized or denounced in their communities. The opposite, they'll be called heroes or warriors. I wonder if Tony Soprano could have got away with that, calling himself a warrior, not a mobster, not a gang member. Well, fast forward again to this weekend. Different town now, the capital city of New Brunswick, Fredericton. Right outside the legislature, some Indian activists started to build a longhouse on a public part as some sort of symbol. And by Indian activists, they all look as white as me, so I'm not even sure if they're Micmac gang members or anti-fracking activists from the Sierra Club just helping them out. I don't know. So Josh shows up to film it. Again, public place, lots of press releases, it's political theater, it's right outside the legislature, other media outlets are there, it's in a public park. But look again, the sun is being singled out. Nobody likes sun news. Blocking sun news. The racist news. Now, Global TV was welcome there. Because after the first carjacking, maybe they made an editorial decision never to embarrass the Micmac Warrior gang again. They'll pretty do whatever the Warriors want them to do just to avoid being hurt or threatened or carjacked again. So Global TV is allowed to film, but not the Sun. Okay, so none of the threats like Tyson Peters or the others did, but just blocking the Sun. So Josh asked the local police what to do. And they agreed with him that it was public land and he had every right to film it. But look what happened when he took them at their word. Okay, so let's, uh, obviously, you have the right to, uh, yeah. I believe you have the right to, uh... Yeah, this is public land, so, yeah, yeah, thank you. But just, just give them, give them some room, okay? So you can, you need some help with your bag there? Hey guys, can you please, uh, get out of the way, please? Hey, just sec, just sec. But what we can do is, you can, you can, you can tape, but you don't have to tape from right here. Uh, let's go. Did you see that? Josh wanted to do his work. And the guys who were intervening to stop him now weren't the Micmac Warriors gang, not even those old ladies. It was Fredericton police wearing their sidearms. They told him that he had misunderstood them when they agreed that he had free speech on public land. He didn't get their message, did he? Now, that was a video taken by some other protesters there. Here's what the audio that Josh's own camera picked up. Look. There is there's an issue with one person, and that one person is you. Okay, that would be bad. Okay, we have a piece of process here. I want to take a stand right now at this place, and not the place. You can have the same picture. I know you get two more on this You get to move back 15 feet or 20 feet and give them some room. Everybody has a right to do something. We don't want to start anything. Give them some room. Fair enough? You're looking at me like you don't understand. What can I do? I have said, okay, if you, if you need some help, I'll help you, I'll, and we'll move back some, look at me. this is not the spot, give them some room to do their, do their ceremonies. Did you get that? So the Fredericton police, whose job it is to uphold the law, are telling Josh Skernick to move 20 feet away from the protesters. He, he hasn't done anything wrong. They haven't really done anything wrong either this time. They haven't threatened him that I saw. They didn't push him. They were just being rude by blocking his shot. That's rude, but that's not criminal. They were just being uncooperative. But everyone was on public property together. But then the police themselves told Josh to get out. He told them that the, that was the protesters' turf that one cop did. That cop right there decided that freedom of the press didn't apply. Oh, oh, sorry. It did apply to Global TV, but not to us at Sun News because... I don't know why. We're, we're not protected by the gang. We've upset someone's feelings. We haven't submitted to them. And the cops will enforce that? And of course, Global TV is fine with all this. Of course they are. They don't really care about freedom of the press as long as they have their own access. Just like CTV doesn't really care about it either. They tailored their reporting after they were carjacked last week too. That's my point. Remember how the media party had a major temper tantrum when Stephen Harper asked that only cameras, not reporters, attend a photo op on Parliament Hill, uh, the media went on strike because their 
precious freedoms were limited by that request. Here, Remember, here's Josh Wingrove of the Globe and Mail tweeting about it. So, the Prime Minister's office has said cameras only inside Harper's speech to caucus. No reporters. Media have mostly agreed to not cover without reporters. And here's Paul McLeod of the Halifax Chronicle Herald. Quote, summary of current standoff between Harper's office and press gallery. PMO wants TV coverage without taking questions. Reporters say no. Here's the Globe again. So it appears to be a bit of a standoff. Either the Prime Minister lets the entire press gallery in, including reporters like last time, or only a Sun News camera. And again, press gallery has just agreed it will not agree to, to a deal that would see a single pool reporter working for everyone allowed in. And here's Katie O'Malley of the CBC. Hey, thanks for giving reporters a story about media standoffs and control tactics to liven up our coverage. So the entire press gallery goes on strike against Stephen Harper, boycotting a news con conference he has because he said he only wanted TV cameras there, not reporters, at an event. But the Sun News Network is harassed not once, not twice, but three times in New Brunswick, twice with violence, or the threat of violence, and the third time with actual police demanding that the Sun move its cameras off public property, and the media party's makeshift union just ignores all this. Of course they do. Because to them, free speech only applies to people who think like them. They all despise Stephen Harper together, so they're all happy to boycott him, but they're all in love with the Micmac Warrior gang, so they hate us for criticizing that gang. And the police, good God, could you imagine if a cop on Parliament Hill laid a finger on a CBC employee or a global T TV employee or CTV employee on Parliament Hill to stop them from bothering Stephen Harper? National news for a week. Calls for internal affairs investigations of the police, blah, blah, blah. But two Fredericton cops just told Josh Skernick to move away while letting global TV stay. And the rest of the media party doesn't mind one bit. It reminded me of my own experience reporting on the I Don't Know More Indian supremacist movement. Remember then when they came downtown here in Toronto right outside my office to criticize my own coverage of them? I went out to meet them on the street right outside my own office with a camera and a microphone. And the police took me away. Remember this? I don't want to leave okay, well, the, what, the area you know here. I know, but what we're trying to do here is create this to a little more safer environment. Right. Clearly, whatever But you, why would you take me away? Because my hands are in my pockets. Okay, so I'm not shouting right. at anyone. How come I'm clearly, being taken away? Clearly, your engagement with the people here mm -hmm. that are protesting. Is, I'm the lawful one, though, aren't I? I, well, I think at this moment, everyone is lawful. Okay. But what's happening here, clearly, you're agitating a lot of people. There are a lot of people upset with you. So you if, I got more, if I got more upset, would you take them away? Um, well, you are one, and that makes this. it easier for you. Absolutely. So this is about what's easy for you. Well, it's easier for society, right? Oh, good Lord. I didn't do anything wrong there. No laws were broken. And no one was actually threatening me either. It's not like that lady policeman was saving me from imminent harm, you heard her. It was just easier for her to detain me on the street than for her not to. Same thing in Fredericton. Nothing was going wrong legally. For the first time, actually, the Micmacs weren't actually threatening a Sun reporter. They were just blocking his view. That's not a crime. But the cops wanted to make the Sun go away. It's easier that way, eh? So they told him to move, just because. There is a major problem of lawlessness in the Indian supremacist movement. Sometimes it's explosive riots. But most of the time it's just a slow burn lawlessness, ignoring court injunctions, ignoring private property, blocking highways or roads or downtown intersections or railway lines, or maybe it's occupying a development in Caledonia or setting up a restaurant on public land without any permits near Hamilton. It's not just the illegality, it's the complete nonchalance of it the exquisite confidence that the police just aren't going to do anything about it. In fact, if you complain about the law breaking and the police indifference, huh, well, you just might be the one taken away by the police.